Hello and welcome to this video on compositions of generating functions. In previous videos we have used generating functions to solve occurrences and we've used the product formula for generating functions to solve counting problems. Today we will uncover the combinatorial meaning underlying the composition of two functions. This will be another example of how generating functions turn a counting problem into an algebra problem. Here is today's objective. We start with an ordinary generating function, a of x, whose constant term, a0, is 0. We will uncover the meaning of the following ordinary generating function. b of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus a of x. Note that forcing the constant term to be 0 is an essential part of this result. Once we understand how this theorem works, we will see why this technical requirement actually makes complete sense. Let's start with a warm-up question for a specific task A. This task is, choose a leader from a set of n people. The requirement that n is greater than 0 is built into the task, which means that the task is impossible when n equals 0. Therefore, there are n ways to choose a leader when n is greater than 0, and there are 0 ways to complete this task when n is equal to 0. So our ordinary generating function for this task is a of x is equal to the sum, as n goes from 1 to infinity, of n times x to the n. Factoring out an x gives us a power series that we recognize from our friendly list of known power series. It's the derivative of the power series for 1 over 1 minus x, and that derivative is 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. So our function a of x is x divided by 1 minus x squared. Now let's consider a more difficult combinatorial problem. Task B consists of two phases. First, we split the set of n people into some number of non-empty sub-intervals. So imagine that we have n people standing in a line. We identify some dividing points and split the people into sublists. In phase two, we choose a leader from each sub-interval. So how many ways are there to complete the two-phase task b? We set little b to be the answer to this counting question for the set of n people, and we define b of x to be the ordinary generating function for this problem. Now, this is actually a rather complicated counting question. We don't know the number of subintervals, and we don't know the number of people in each of these subintervals. In other words, this counting problem has a lot of cases. Over the next few slides, we will see that embracing the generating function way will allow us to solve this problem rather easily. More specifically, we will be able to find a formula for the ordinary generating function b of x. We can then look at the coefficients of the power series for b of x to find the answer to our problem for any number of people. Let's reformulate task b by relating it back to the task a in our warm-up question. We let a of x be the ordinary generating function for task a, which is pick a leader from n people where n is some positive integer. We let b of x be the ordinary generating function for task b, which is divide the set n into some number of subintervals and then perform task a on each of these subintervals. What we are going to do is partition the generating function b into cases, according to the number of subintervals that we have. So let's suppose that we have zero subintervals. Then we have nothing to do for our task b, and we know that there is one way to do nothing. Of course, this only works when n is equal to 0, so our generating function for the 0 subintervals case is just 1. Now this may seem a little confusing because we made a big deal about how task a is not defined when n is equal to 0. So it's fine if you want to consider this case to just be by definition. But here is the logic behind why task b is defined for n is equal to 0, even though task a is not. When we start with the empty set, we don't have any subintervals, so we stop after phase 1, so there is never a need to apply task A. In other words, there really is one way to do nothing. What about when we have one subinterval? This corresponds to the generating function A of x, because we have one set and we need to pick a leader from this non-empty set. How about two subintervals? This time, the answer is a of x times a of x, which is a squared of x. And this is a special case of the product formula for ordinary generating functions. As a convenient reminder, here is the product formula. 
This is the generating function version of the product principle. Suppose that f of x is the ordinary generating function for some task f, and g of x is the ordinary generating function for another task g. Then the function f of x times g of x is the generating function for the following two-phase task. First, we split our set n into two intervals, the smaller numbers and the larger numbers. We then perform task f on the smaller numbers and perform task g on the larger numbers. Our formula a squared of x corresponds to the special case where both task f and task g are task a. So let's keep going. The ordinary generating function for three subintervals is just ax squared times ax, which is just a cubed x. And by induction, the ordinary generating function for splitting our set into k intervals and performing task a on each of these intervals is ax to the k. So we've covered all the possible cases for the number of intervals. Next, we add these functions together to get the ordinary generating function b of x. We can conclude that the generating function b of x is the infinite sum of 1, that's corresponding to 0 subintervals, plus a of x, that's having 1 interval, a squared of x, that's having 2 intervals, and so on up to a k of x, that has k intervals, and so on. But we recognize this power series. If we take u is equal to a of x, we get the geometric series for u. This sums to 1 over 1 minus u. In other words, b of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus a of x. Now this is terrific, because you'll remember that we know the function a of x. This is the ordinary generating function for the task, pick a leader from n people. The formula that we found for a of x is x over 1 over x quantity squared. And plugging this into our formula for b of x results in the function 1 plus x over the quantity 1 minus 3x plus x squared. And now we are done. We have found the ordinary generating function for the task, split a line of people into non-empty subintervals, and then choose a leader for each subinterval. When we look at the power series of this function, the coefficients look familiar. They are the even Fibonacci numbers. How cool is that? Having worked through this example, we are now ready to state a general theorem about ordinary generating functions. We will call this the composition rule for ordinary generating functions. We have a task, a, with an ordinary generating function, a of x, and we require that a0 is equal to 0. So the constant term of this generating function has to be 0. We let the task b be the following two-phase process. First, we partition our set into any number of non-empty subintervals, and then we perform a on each of these subintervals. If b of x is the ordinary generating function for task b, then b of x is 1 over 1 minus a of x. Now here's what's great. The proof of the composition rule is exactly the same as the argument that we just gave in our pick a leader for each subinterval example. If you go back and rewatch this video, you will see that we only used the specific formula for a of x at the end. The rest of the logic is completely transferable to the general case. And now it's worth revisiting the requirement that the constant term a of 0 is 0. Conceptually, this corresponds to the requirement that we partition the set n into non-empty subintervals. Because if empty intervals were allowed, there would be an infinite number of ways to complete task b. We could just include an arbitrary number of empty intervals. This conceptual argument becomes a mathematical one. We obtain b of x from the infinite sum of the a to the k functions. So if a0 were equal to 1, then the constant term of this infinite sum of functions would also be infinite. So that is why we need this extra technical condition that the constant term of a of x must be 0. This brings us to our u-try problem. A collection of people line up to get into a haunted house. They enter in groups of various sizes according to the order that they arrive. While they are in the haunted house, some members of each group get slimed by a spooky ghost. How many ways can a line of n people go through this Halloween attraction? Your job is to identify the task A, find its generating function, and then apply the composition rule to create the generating function for task B, which is divide the set of n things into non-empty subintervals and perform task A on each of these subintervals. I've broken this process down into four steps for you. This gives you a clear roadmap to solve the problem. Good luck and have fun.